Oh my goodness! Listen, welcome to another video of your daily dose of NCLEX. This is gonna be amazing. Today, we are going to talk about atrial fibrillation. I know a lot of people, ECG are their weakness, and trust me, on my program, the ECG episode, episode number 24, is my blowing my students love it now I'm just gonna give you a sneak peek of course ECG there's a lot to talk about today we're only gonna talk about atrial fibrillation actually just just now one of my students texted me and they asked me about atrial fibrillation before 48 hours after 48 hours what's the treatment and then I said you know what let me make this video and give it to everyone on YouTube and Facebook all right listen if you don't know me my name is Mo aka Alpha Slice on the internet I helped thousands of students pass their NCLEX on the very next attempt actually in the last 12 months we helped 6,000 students pass Woo! all right amazing listen just for I mean, dude, I want to give you a bonus. Of course, I'm going to teach you. We're going to talk about atrial fibrillation. I'm going to show you everything you need to know about atrial fibrillation. But if you want to learn more or you need NCLEX help, you can attend my free webinar where I show how we help thousands of students. I'm going to show you the ultimate NCLEX algorithm. And for you just attending the free webinar, I'm going to give you this ebook for free. Right? This ebook, the, uh, the Real NCLEX World versus NCLEX Textbook. What is, what is this ebook? You know my students, when they go to the test center, after they test, they get out, they text me the topics that they got on the real test. So what I do, over the past 12 months, we took screenshots of those topics. We put them in one ebook, and I wanna give you this ebook for free. Now, a lot of people would say, hey Mo, but the NCLEX or NCSPN say that students cannot share you know, topics that they got on their test. Dude, they can't share topics now, they cannot share the exact questions, and we keep our students' identity private, okay? So we're done with that because I saw a few comments on my previous video where people were saying that. All right, now let's talk about ECG, atrial fibrillation. You know, there are atrial arrhythmias, ventricular arrhythmias, if the heart is four chambers, right? Now we're gonna talk about just atrial fibrillation, which is an atrial arrhythmia. I mean, you can tell from the name. All right, let me flip the board. All right, so this is the rhythm. I mean, I tried to draw the rhythm to the best of my abilities. Um, I raised it a few times, but you know, you know atrial fibrillation, right? So this is the rhythm. The first thing when you look at a rhythm, you want to highlight four things, right? Rate, rhythm, P wave, and QRS, right? So, rate, a lot of people don't know. Uh, now, now, this is not basics, this is not ECG basics, right? But I'm gonna go over basics very quickly. So a lot of people don't know how to highlight the rate. Let's say this rhythm from here all the way to there is a six second strip, all right? I'm not sure if there's an E at the end or not, but this is a six second strip. So how do I highlight the rate? What I do is I count how many QRSs we have on the strip. So this is called a P wave. This is, this is called a QRS, and this is called a T wave, right? So what I'm interested about the QRSs, how many QRSs are there, right? So this is what I'm gonna count. This is one, this is two, this is three, right? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I've got 12 and I multiply it by 10 because this is a six second strip. Now the heart rate is 120 beats per minute. All right, awesome. So now we got the rate. So, so okay, so when you got 120, is this a bradycardia or a tachycardia? You know the normal heart rate is, from 60 to 100, so above 100, 120, that's considered tachycardia, right? So this is tachycardia. Now the rhythm, is it sinus, or I mean irregular or irregular, right? So how do I determine if it's regular or irregular? First off, you've got, you've got to have like a piece of paper, right? And this is what you do, this is what you actually do when you get an ECG strip from a patient. You have a regular piece of paper, and you, right here, you, you mark it, like that, right? You mark it, and then you mark it the second one. And then what you're gonna do, you're gonna see if it's the same distance. Oh my God, this is the same distance. Oh, this is not the same distance. So you, you're looking from an R to R, they call it an R wave because Q, R, S, right? So the R, from R to R is the same distance as from the other R to the R, right? So all R to R, R to R, R to R on the whole strip should be the same, right? So what I'm gonna do, boom, boom, those are the same, boom, not the same. 
boom, almost. Boom, the same, the same. No, 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 all right? So if one varies, then it's uh, irregular rhythm, right? So this is what we're gonna do. Now, we established that this is an irregular, irregular rhythm, right? Now the P wave, what I wanna do, I wanna highlight if there's a P wave before every QRS. Now here, this is a P wave. So we're gonna do a check. Here, this is a T wave and this is a P. So here where the second beat starts. So yes, there is a P wave. Here, yes, there is a P wave. Oh my God, there's no P wave here. There's only one wave, which is a T wave. So we're missing a P wave. All right, so missing P wave. Here, there is a P wave. Here, there is a P wave, which is right here. There is, oh my God, there's a P wave missing. Yes, here there's a P wave missing. There is a P wave, there is a P wave missing. There is a P wave, all right? So we've got three P waves missing. If you have only one P wave missing, now that could be um, a PVC, but I mean, you would notice the PVC because the QRS is gonna be wide, right? But in this case, it's atrial fibrillation. Anytime you have a P wave missing, 99% of the time, it's an atrial fibrillation, right? So P wave, negative. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna write an EG, right? Negative or an A, right? And then the QRS. I wanna determine if the QRS is a wide QRS or a narrow complex. So in this case, it's a narrow complex. I mean, now you don't have, you can't measure the distance, but I'm telling you, this is, this is a narrow complex. A wide complex could, I mean, a narrow complex is 0 0.06 to one second, which is 1.5 small squares. 1.5 small squares to 2.5 small squares, all right? Because every small square is 0 0.04 seconds. Now those, those are basics. If you don't know the basics, maybe I'm gonna do another video talking about basics of ECG, but you should know the basics if you're studying for the NCLEX. If not, all you have to do is text me on my number. You can see my number on the screen. So text me and I'm gonna help you with basics. All right, so, so this is the case. Um, so this is a narrow complex. If it's a wide complex, then it's more than one second, which means more than two and a half squares, small squares, all right? So this is a narrow complex. So here, QRS, I'm gonna say narrow. So there are two terms, narrow or wide. Now, if I've established or those, now I'm gonna decide what is this. This is atrial fibrillation, all right? Atrial fibrillation because there's no P wave, irregular rhythm, and it's tachycardia, and QRS is narrow. Now we're gonna talk about the treatment. And that's the thing when people, should we, should we talk about treatment? Where should we talk? All right, now we're gonna talk about treatment and nursing care. Make sure you pull out your note, your notepad and start taking notes. So first, you gotta establish, when did this atrial fibrillation start? If it started just now, so less than 48 hours ago, then there's a different algorithm. If it's more than 48 hours ago, then it's a different algorithm, right? Now, the other thing you, you need to establish, is this patient stable or not? So every time you, a patient comes to the emergency department or a regular admission and, the patient, and you took an ECG strip and then you find out that the patient has atrial fibrillation, all right? So he, he matches all those criteria. Now this patient has atrial fibrillation, what are you gonna do? All right, number one, you've got to take vital signs, all right? Before vital signs, number one, airway. You've gotta look at the patient and see that that patient is breathing properly. So airway and breathing should be established. If you see that the patient is a little bit, I don't know, man, he's taking deep breath, he doesn't feel comfortable, boom! You're gonna take vital signs, right? You take vital signs, you're gonna take blood pressure, you know, heart rate and breathing, and then you're gonna put a pulse oximetry on the patient to see you know, their oxygen saturation in their peripheral, right? Now, oxygen saturation is below 95, Right? If it's below 95%, what you wanna do, you wanna put oxygen on that patient. Come on, you don't need a physician order to put oxygen on that patient. That's a very tricky NCLEX question when it comes to prioritization, all right? So put oxygen on the patient and establish an order later. You've got 24 hours to establish a written order, all right? Now you put oxygen on the patient, you took vital signs. Now we know that this is a stable, atrial fibrillation, all right? Then you're gonna ask the patient. Now, if you don't know, you don't know. You're gonna ask the patient, hey, have you had atrial fibrillation, like heart palpitation? 
He says, yes, yes, I've been having those. For how long? He'll say, they started this morning. All right, now we established that this thing most probably started less than 48 hours ago. All right, what are you gonna do? So this is how the algorithm starts. First, you've gotta put the patient on a monitor. Of course, you've gotta put the patient on a monitor because you want to continuously monitor their heart rhythm, all right? So you put the patient on a, on a monitor. And this, now the second step is you've gotta establish an IV access. You can't be calling the doctor and then the doctor or the physician or, or, or the doctor on, on the unit comes in and he gives you orders and now you've gotta waste all that time, 10 minutes, 15 minutes to establish an IV access. No, 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 no. You put the patient on a monitor, you delegate to the charge nurse to tell the physician that we're having an atrial fibrillation right here. In the meantime, you're establishing IV access, all right? Now we establish IV access. This patient has atrial fibrillation less than 48 hours ago. What do you expect from the physician, all right? Now, if you are ACLS, ACLS certified and your facility allows you to follow protocol, then you just follow protocol, all right? Now that we have established that this atrial arrhythmia or atrial fibrillation started less than 48 hours ago. What is the treatment, all right? What am I going to expect from a physician? Number one, I wanna control the heart rate. Now, I wanna control the heart rate of the patient. And number two, I wanna convert this atrial fibrillation to a normal sinus rhythm. How do I control the heart rate? Of course, Valsalva maneuver. Um, so a lot of people, you know, with Valsalva maneuver, it's not curtain massage. We don't use that anymore. It's not approved because sometimes there might be clots. You massage them, you're sending MLI everywhere. The second thing that is approved, still approved, is uh, bearing down as if you are defecating or putting your thumb in your mouth and blowing on it, all right? Which will increase the intrathoracic pressure and might convert that heart rate from a tachycardia to a normal heart rate, all right? So we established that when you control the heart rate, Let's say that, like, like the Valsalva maneuver did not control the heart rate. Now you need a physician order for beta blocker or calcium channel blocker, all right? Boom, we control the heart rate. Now the second step is how you, you wanna do control, uh, cardioversion. Cardioversion could be two things. Could be amidoron, which sometimes you give, oh not sometimes, but the protocol is you give 150 milligrams over 10 minutes and then you give uh, one milligram per minute for six hours. Usually 450 for an adult who is like normal weight, which is 70 kilograms. But one milligram per minute for six hours. And then let's say you still have time before the 48 hours all on amidoron, the patient did not convert to a normal sinus rhythm. What you need to do, you need to do cardioversion, all right? So you prepare the patient for cardioversion. Usually you give the patient sedation because you don't want to shock them and the patient is like, ah! screaming all over the place. You explain the procedure to the patient, you give a sedative and then you, cardio, you, you do cardioversion. So the first shock should be 100 joules. So you go from 100 joules, 200 joules, 300 joules, sometimes they skip the 300 joules and they just go to 360, all right? And usually the patient um, cardiovert on the DC shock, right? Uh, so if, now this is less than 48 hours. If the patient is more than 48 hours, so almost the same, but before you start the patient on amidoron, you've gotta do, I mean, you can start the patient on amidoron, it's the same step. You give 150 milligrams over 10 minutes and then one milligram per minute for the next six hours, all right? Now before, if the patient didn't convert, before you, you know, shock the patient, what you need to do, you need to establish that this patient does not have clots in their atrium. Oops, all right, so they do not have clots in their atrium. How do you establish that? You do a transesophageal echocardiogram, or they call it TEE, all right? Transesophageal echocardiogram, echocardiogram, and then, you know, transesophageal, you establish that the patient does not have clots in their atrium, and then boom, you cardiovert the patient on the spot. You follow the same algorithm, which is 100 joules, 200 joules, 300 joules, 360 joules, all right? Usual three shocks, all right? I hope you understood this whole thing. If you didn't keep up and you write everything down, make sure you repeat this video and you write everything down. Listen, share this video with your friends who need help with ECG or need help to understand atrial fibrillation. And if you 
One more bonus, if you need more NCLEX help and you wanna join my free webinar where I show the ultimate algorithm of how my students pass on their next attempt, that is the ultimate NCLEX blueprint. I'm gonna give you this bonus again for free. What is this bonus? I call it the 300 Spartan Drug e-booklet. So in this book, you know how my students, they go to the test center after they get out, they text me the topics, they also text me the, the, the drugs that they got on their NCLEX. What did we do over the past 12 months? We have collected all those drugs, we did the research, we put them in one e-booklet, and we, we wrote down the name of the drug, indication, side effects, and patient teaching, which is all you need to know. So if you master those drugs, there's no way you are going to get a drug or medication calculation questions wrong on your real NCLEX, which is amazing. So I'm giving you this for free after you attend my free webinar and sign up. It's gonna be amazing. Amazing. Again, share this video. My name is Mo, known as Alpha Slice. I'm your NCLEX guru, and I can't wait for another episode of Those of NCLEX. Love your face. Hello, everyone. My name is Kelsey. I am from Nebraska, and I am so happy to be able to make this video. Um, I finally passed my NCLEX. Um, it was on my second try. Um, I just want to give a big thanks to Mo because this program is amazing. Um, I had my doubts at first, um, but after completing the course and actually completing the first video, I knew it was going to be one of the best programs. Um, I took my first NCLEX on June 9th, um, and I got my results back about three days later, and it turned out that I failed. I was so heartbroken, and I just was checked out mentally after that because it was after studying so hard for it and studying classes and everything like that to get to that point it just broke me so I didn't take my second NCLEX until December 8th of the same year but it took me months to be able to actually get into the studying groove again and I was going to study with Kaplan but I ended up not feeling comfortable with it because it was just repeating questions so a couple of my friends told me about Mo. Um, I had already seen Mo's ads on Facebook and even YouTube, and I was intrigued, but I just never got myself to look into it further. Um, so a couple of my friends told me about um, Mo's webinar and how it helped them because they had to take the NCLEX two times as well. Um, they said that Mo explained everything in a way that it helped them understand better than ever before. So I finally just got the courage and bought the course and it just helped me understand everything with a better light. Um, it gave me the most important details about every disease process and even like how to answer the questions correctly. Mo's program is honestly one of the best I've seen and I've seen quite a few. I've seen UWorld, I wasn't a big fan of that, Kaplan, um, and pretty much a couple others. I just can't remember them at the moment, but Mo's webinars are amazing. They're easy. They're to the point. If you listen to everything this man says, you will pass your NCLEX on the next try and you will become an alpha slicer. I am so proud to be able to say that I am an alpha slicer and thank you Mo and everyone on his team for making this amazing course and thanks. Mm -hmm.